I am Misha Charles and I am your presenter for today. Thank you for joining us for SAT TV News. Among the major developments, fires and earthquake wreak havoc on the city as part of a simulation exercise. Haiti improve education with $50 million in grants. German growth forecast cut by Bundesbank. Details of these and other stories after the break. Thank you for staying with us. Now for the details of the news. Dominica is better able to control the spread of the citrus greening disease after a week of analysis done by experts from Florida. The insect and the disease are said to be very low on the island and this is good for Dominica, according to etymologist Dr. Eric Rory. He says there is a good possibility that they could eradicate the disease. You already have good biological controls in place here, which are lady beetles and lacewings and spiders. And then there's also an introduced parasitoid, which is a, a wasp who utilizes only the Asian citrus psyllid. It's the only insect it can develop on, and it utilizes that to complete its development. And by doing that, it destroys the insect. So we've been collaborating and sending the, these parasitoids here, and they're being released. And also your government will begin rearing them and releasing on those on themselves. He advises the Ministry of Agriculture to put in place regulations to stop the insects from entering the commercial groves in Dominica and this would further help keep the disease under control. So there's a good chance you can prevent them from getting there because of the, the terrain here. The, it's such thick jungle and the mountains and everything helps stop them from moving. Because the disease cannot be cultured on artificial media, it is difficult to determine the pathogen without DNA analysis. Dr. Sean Sun, plant pathologist, says the plant protection unit would need an upgrade in its diagnostic tool, which is real-time PCR. Uh, which can uh, be used to complete the whole process in about uh, uh, three to four hours instead of you know, one or two days and use the, uh, some kind of conventional methods to do that, the uh, job. And uh, especially for the, uh, this unit also needed to work with the, with the public and get support from them and try to set up quarantine areas. We targeted on that the areas very heavily infested and they also have some severe infection in the areas to remove all infected plants. And in more news, in October 2012, the IRC entered into discussions with Dominic to negotiate for a new license to generate, transmit, distribute and supply electricity in Dominica. Dominic's current license expires on December 31, 2015 and according to the Electricity Supply Act and the present license procedure, Dominic was required to make an application for a new license. IRC Executive Director Mr. Lance McCaskey says there are two licenses involved in this negotiation. One license for generation and the other license for transmission, distribution and supply. Uh, those two, two new licenses are for the supply of electricity in Dominica beyond the expiry date of Dominic's present license. Dominic's present license expires on the 31st of December 2015 and at this point the IRC is looking at two new licenses that will take effect from January 1st 2016. Mr. McCaskey noted that they had their first face-to-face -face meeting with Dominic in October where they dealt with house clearing matters. In the first place, we had sent them two licenses in a letter uh, dated, I think it was January 2011. In response to us, they decided on their own that they want an integrated license because they are an integrated company. And so instead of commenting on two licenses, they merged the two licenses and commented on one. He says Dominic told them that they wanted an integrated license which was contrary to the letter that they had sent. 
He added that the last paragraph of the letter advised them that the Commission is prepared to issue two licenses. In the letter, it also stated that between the two licenses, one will be for generation and the other for transmission, distribution and supply. Ms. McCaskey says due to Dominic's new facilities, they are prepared to offer them a license for 50 years. Uh, that's taking into consideration the average depreciation life plus the fact that the IRC, one of the, one of the functions of the IRC is to encourage uh, investment in Domi in, 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 into Dominica. So we said to them that we are prepared to offer you a 15-year, tentatively a 15-year life, but that will be conditioned on what the study says. Now, if the study says that the, uh, the useful life of the assets will be longer than 15 years, then certainly, because we are tied, because we are tied to the law, the law says it must be related to the useful life of the assets. He says once the IRC and Dominic come to an understanding, the documents will be sent to the stakeholders. And in more news, Dominican builders have been advised to play a more active role in the discussion with the government so that they can influence the construction guidelines in this country. This was the advice of Bahamian contractor Mr. Stephen Rinkle, who was a featured speaker at the Builders on Contractors Association of Dominica, held on Thursday, December 6, 2012. Mr. Rinkle said being part of the Builders and Contractors Association would allow builders to have a forum to exchange ideas and find solutions to the problems. He says without this, there will be continued division in the industry. Contractor associations. Reach out to all practicing contractors to join the Association for Solidarity. In the Bahamas, many of the smaller contractors initially struggled with the value of joining an organization. The truth is, however, there is no other entity that really has your interest at heart. Governments listen to numbers and strength lies in a membership who speak collectively. While market-driven factors will control many aspects of our industry, policies, programs, and lobbying efforts can only be achieved through collective representation. A vibrant association will provide a platform for the exchange of ideas that are faced within the construction industry. He said networking with industry professionals and contractors is also very important as oftentimes projects are done through subcontracting or joint ventures while showing developers that a cohesive, full entity represents the construction industry in the country. This positive image gives an investor a level of comfort when dealing with their shareholders. And in many instances, the person we are negotiating with has to answer to a board of directors that may be 50 stories up in a Manhattan skyscraper the risk becomes reduced when the investor has some comfort. The truth is that individually we sink, but together we swim. It has been a challenge to attract the smaller contractors, but as we progress with training, certification, and website exposure, benefits far outweigh the costs. He believes that the Builders and Contractors Association should also develop a training certification program which will separate the bona fide building contractors from the wannabes. He also pointed out that workers' workshops and seminars are just as important as they focus on specific topics which helps establish better relationships with the public in creating awareness of the association. Remember, an informed consumer is our best customer. Recruit local suppliers and professional consultants to speak on a range of topics. We have had good success by forming an associate membership category for local suppliers and industry professionals. We give them direct access to our member contractors and endorse them at trade shows. They in turn support us through dues, donations, and product development support from their manufacturers. Earthquakes and fires wreaked havoc in the Roseau area on Friday, December the 7th as part of the disaster management simulation exercise. Remember, this is a simulation exercise. It is not the real thing. The financial center near the government headquarters building was on fire. We did not know the scale of the fire, but only that the building was evacuated and there were injured persons inside. Our cameras were not allowed in the building. Meanwhile, an earthquake struck the government headquarters building and people were critically injured. 
There were some with lacerations and to their heads and feet, and some lay unconscious. The fire and ambulance were called in, and the Dominica Red Cross set up stations to help assist the injured. There was also an alert to some 250 students and teachers injured at the Goodwill Secondary School. Some trapped on the rubble, even a pregnant teacher got caught up in the disasters. Those who were critical were tagged with the red band, and those who were assigned black were dead. Disaster management has scheduled a debriefing to take place on Monday, December the 10th, 2012. In more news, every child is special and he or she deserves to achieve his growth and dreams in a healthy surrounding. They should also not be deprived of their primary rights. It is the birthright of the child to enjoy his or her primary rights, and this is why a dinner will be held for underprivileged children at the Barker State Community Center on Saturday the 8th. Organizer of the event and director of Love One Teach One, Miss Gloria Walsh, explains how the idea originated. We usually have our annual summer school, so one of um, the ideas came from our the new Peace Corps volunteer, Miss Carrie Katz, who, um, who came up with the idea as to doing an etiquette dinner. But we saw it wasn't the appropriate time um, at the time because the children had to go through different um, training sessions. So what we did, we say we'll just do it as an event for the Christmas. Um, school will be closing on the 14th, but during that time we usually have our annual Christmas party, but I think this year we change the focus in terms of, you know, teaching the children how to eat at the table. Each child deserves to grow up in a healthy environment where they have access to health-related facilities such as quality integrated water and sanitation services. According to Ms. Walsh, the children have received a lot of help in terms of preparing for the dinner. Um, using the fork and knife, table manners, we had a, um, we had a person in the name of um, Ms. Leslie she came in to give the children, you know, some ideas as how to, you know, how to use the napkin, how to place the napkin, how to ask for second servings, etc. A lot of other things um, pertaining to the table manners. Love One Teach One promotes the and provides these impoverished children a better upbringing in which they can attain their full potential to lead a meaningful life in the future. Mitch Wall says the children are very excited and she believes this dinner will be extremely beneficial for them. Well, so far so good, I would say, because we have different persons coming on board to give us assistance. So um, in terms of the different um, dishes, some donating dishes, some donating desserts, and um, even decoration, decoration sorry, and <clears throat> some cutlery from a group based in Canada who sent us, you know, all the decorations, balloons, everything. Peace Corps volunteer Miss Kareen Katz was responsible for teaching the children how to eat at the table. Good morning, my name is Carrie Katz and I'm the Peace Corps volunteer for the Love One Teach One Foundation and I also work in the Roseau Primary School. Uh, my role was mainly to help supervise the uh, practice sessions for the etiquette dinner and I will be seated at one of the tables for the dinner. Could you tell us about the practice sessions? So we had about six, seven practice sessions and depending on children's schedules since some children had to study for exams, other children had other classes. So we'd have them come in, we'd set them up in the tables with a knife, fork and spoon and a plate and we'd go over different, uh, different polite mannerisms that they need to work on. And also, Miss Leslie came in for a day and she also gave a lot of really useful pointers. The dinner begins at 7 p.m. The artistic director of Teat Power, Mr. Alex Bruno, is of the view that Dominicans will travel back in time when he hosts his play titled The Dread Act this weekend. In an exclusive interview with Sat TV, Mr. Bruno pointed out that the idea behind this play came about accidentally while he was working on another play and the story of The Dread Act kept coming up to mind 
so he set out to work on it. The, the Dread Act, has, for those who know, was a popular bit of legislation which was passed in Parliament in 1974, on this November 21. And the Act basically gave power to the authorities, aka the police, to arrest the situation of lawlessness and popular uprisings, or unpopular uprising among the youths at the time. The law kind of heavy-handed, one slanted, one sided in, to an extent and um, in retrospect inhuman in certain ways but necessary at the time. So we felt that it is necessary that we revisit the past lest we make the same mistake. And um, that's basically what the play is about. However, Mr. Bruno says that they have taken the pros and cons of the act between the dreads and the police to summarize in a responsible, unbiased way what took place during this time in Dominica. In discussions with the Dreads while doing the relevant research to gather information for this play, many stated this act was inhumane and some innocent people were targeted. However, the police justified their use of force during the period while the act was in place. The, the Dreads on their own were generally okay, but there were some thugs among, you know, um, the name Pocosion come to mind. And Pocosion is a long, long, long lecture, I can give a lecture on Pocosion. He was a kind of a political operative. You know, and then Tumba, who had some experience out of Dominica in Antigua, he had ulterior motives for the kind of engagements that he had and the crimes that quote unquote he committed. These were the two major elements which caused the fracas between the police and the dreads. And you have to appreciate that if there's a law and the police must police the law, the people who suit the profile of the the people who infringed the law would have been targeted and I believe a number of dreads were innocently targeted but there's always a but and there's a society, there's a system and the police had to do what had to have been done because at the time this was a very popular law supported by the opposition, implemented by the parliament, presented by the government of Dominica. Mr. Bruno says this play is intended for all Dominicans and visitors alike, especially those who were not born during that time or those who want a better understanding of the art. There will be a special production of the play for school children on Monday, December 10th at 3 p.m., while the play will take place on Sunday, December 9th at the Arak House of Culture at 8 p.m. and at the Azils Valley Country Club in Bourne. The artistic director stated with only three productions of the play and with a population of 70,000, he is hoping that the play will be sold out, which is a must-see for all. Mr. Bruno highlighted that putting on a show like this was an in inevitable task many would shy away from, but he, dedicated, he was dedicated in telling the story and the cast members made the sacrifice to practice every night for over two months. This was his reaction when asked what he thinks will be imprinted on the minds of the people who attend the play. Some will be angry, some will be glad, some will ask, some will ask questions, some will doubt. We expect some people to get inquisitive and to deep further. We expect um, the cast members to benefit most from the production because they have been enjoying this, the run, the, the build up to it. Um, we do not expect a revolution. This is not the kind of work that sparked a revolution, but we expect an awareness. We expect a reawakening. We expect a consciousness. We expect that the people will learn to appreciate our work better and maybe give a little more attention and respect to the kind of work that we do at Teat Power. Because that's our mission, to document socio-political, cultural happenings on the island of Dominica. We don't just put on comedy for comedy's sake. We put on work which might be comedy, but with a twist of seriousness and a nice slice of history. And over the past 11 years, that's what we've been doing. Mr. Bruno said some of the stories that the Dreads told him of things that took place during the act, if they have to be repeated, it, must, it might just cause a revolution because of the blatant inhumane actions that took place. One thing I would like to correct though is that somebody suggested that the act was passed because of the, the slaying of... Uh, of a prominent Dominican Ted Honeychurch and that is in, um, incorrect. The act was passed in 1974 and Brother Honeychurch, of, you know, may the Lord bless his soul, he was taken out in um, 1981. So there's no way the act or the killing influenced the act, maybe vice versa. Probably the act influenced it, you know. But that is a very sensitive area that I don't even wish to go into. 
and I got personal accounts of the day when this gentleman would have left and what happened before and so on. Again, I can't really touch that story because, I mean, I'm a, I'm a person who believes in civility and um, I, 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 I do not want to really create any unpleasantness. This is his invitation to the public on why they should attend the play. This is a Dominican group. We have been performing um, for over a decade. We are an accomplished international group with a good enough writer and um, a more effective director and a cast of characters who will bring any play or activities to life in a way that no other acting group can. And I'm not boasting, I'm seeing it as it is. We've got the technical people, we've got the practical skills, we've got a fantastic, authentic story that you will not see in any other shape, form, like we are doing it. It's a one weekend only event, Saturday at Azil, Sunday at Roseau in the evening at 8 o'clock, and at 3 o'clock on Monday for children and other people who can see it. There is a 20-member cast team for the show, which includes a two-year-old and five technical people for the production. SAT, of course, always document our shows. We always give you a personal invitation. Many of our shows have been documented by SAT and SAT only. And, and this is because of the kind of love that Mr. A and Mrs. A has given and uh, the kind of respect I have for your production and your television company. Um, and this show too will be um, documented by you um, and the people will see it sometime in the future, maybe in the next 10 years on SAT telecoms. So they must really come out to see it and then stay with SAT, subscribe to SAT and see the Dread Act sometime in the future on SAT telecoms. Mr. Bruno said at the end of this play, he will be happy if the chief of police is present as well as the priest of the Rastafarian movement. The production team has done all possible to strike a balance while presenting the facts as they are in an informative and dramatic form to the people. Giving back to the community will be the main focus of what is dubbed the Hungry to Worship concert, sheltered for Saturday, December 8th at the Newtown Savannah. This show will have a special twist as the headliner is gospel singer Atta Borfa, all the way from Ghana, Africa. Pastor of the Gospel Light Temple in Luvia, Roderick Gilbert, says the show was conceptualized when he saw a Dominican needed a visit from God and an artist all Dominicans would love. He thinks that Atta Borfa was a perfect choice to unite in Dominicans. We realize that we're in a community that's very needy and we want to stretch our hands to the less fortunate among us. We want to help persons add value to their lives and uh, we thought that um, this was a good time to do it and we thank Atta for coming on board and being supportive of this venture in Dominica. Pastor Gilbert says lives will be touched at this concert which is open to all who want God's blessings while helping out a worthy cause. We are persons in the community who cannot go to school. Um, parents are not able to, to send them to school so we want to give a helping hand. We also have a feeding program in the community where we feed persons on a Saturday. We call it soup kitchen. But we want to do more than we're doing right now. And so we want to extend our hand. We are that there are persons in the community who have no access to a computer at home. And so the assignments from school um, are being given where the computer comes into use. And so we want to be able to have computers in church so persons can afterwards come to access um, these this computers and get the assignments done. We also realize that persons struggle with certain subject matters, like mathematics especially, and so we want to, to, to help them out. So we are persons who are willing at this time to come on board and be supportive and, and just help teach our young people in the community. So about adding value to lives. So basically that's, 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 that's it. We are here to help people. Because it's not about church, it's about community. I want to touch lives of the community. Mr. Borfa says when he got the call from his management to perform in Dominica, he was very excited as he heard a lot of positive things about the country and its people. He said the show, which will be raising funds for the needy people in society, is a great idea and this is a wonderful thing for him to be part of and he will be giving it his very best. The, the, word, the word of God, the word of God is the same everywhere. When, when you have, a, when you are an artist who, who is sensitive to the voice of the Holy Ghost, that, that's one thing about what I do. I don't just sit down and say I want to write a song. I hear, I hear God. So when God gives me the message, I don't, I don't do, I don't try to alter it. I don't try to add up. I don't try to s subtract. I just give to the people exactly what gives me, and I think that's one of the reasons why. People everywhere in the world are able to relate to my music and I, I trust God and I know that the best is yet to come because we are ever ready to listen to the voice of the Holy Ghost. Mr. Boafer says this show will not just be about excitement but to feel the presence of God. 
He says, like the Bible says, when the praises go up, blessings come down, and the praise will be so powerful that the blessings will surely come down. He writes 90% of his songs and says he has been singing since the tender age of two. The, 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 the energy comes from the fact that when, when, when I sing, people get blessed and they come at the feedback, realizing that what we are doing is being a blessing, not just to, to my... I, I come from Africa. And what I do is not just blessing Africa, it's blessing the entire world. I'm, I, I now, I'm now based in the UK, and what, what my music is doing in the UK is awesome. We'll come to, come to Europe. Now we are in the Caribbean, and it's, it's a blessing. Mr. Bofa stated, all who attend this concert will certainly live with the blessing of God. And whatever issue we have, we should attend the show so that God can intervene and administer a special anointing on our lives. Dominica and the, the people of Dominica and the visitors of Dominica, if everybody listening to me live right now, we have this show coming up tomorrow at 7, right? 7.30. 7.30. I want to invite you. Come with your friends. Come with your family. Come with anybody that you know about. And let's all come and then lift our hands, lift holy hands, and lift our voices and bless God. And let's see what blessing God has for us. Here is an a cappella of Mr. Borfa's most popular song. Hey, my God is good, you. Hey, my God is good. Everything not double, double, not double, double. Everything not double, double, not double, double. Promotion double, double. Not double, double, your money double, double, not double, double, your blessings double, double, not double, double. Let me see you tomorrow at the program. See you. Tickets for the show can be purchased at the CLC bookstore. This has been the local segment of the news. Coming up next, regional highlights.